in this uh, video clip, we're going to focus for a few minutes on considerations and farm margin around ending the breeding season. We, we focus first of all on the considerations. So the first consideration we have to think about or you have to think about when you're considering milking through the winter is labour availability. Will there be um, a surplus of labour or a labour available at least to, to milk cows over the winter? On many one person uh, units, uh, there may not be a massive quantity of labour and people will also, particularly family, will also welcome uh, the break that's conferred by drying the cows off for a month to six weeks over the winter time. However, on farms where there's a lot of available or hired labour, um, having people milking cows may be a, a more profitable alternative uh, than having the cows dry for uh, a six to eight week period. Herd fertility is another consideration that, that dictates or helps to determine whether or not we choose to milk on over the winter. If the calving pattern is very spread out with a, with a high proportion of lay calvers, we've seen clearly that the milking across the winter will deliver some additional margin for the farmer. Uh, but but uh, running a truncated breeding season is only possible if there are suitable replacements available to make up the difference, whether they're home reared or bought in, if the later calvers are being culled. The third consideration has to do with herd size, and th there has to be a critical number that, that justifies turning the, bu the bulk tank on. So that'll be a combination of herd fertility and actual herd size will we'll justify the number. We'll look at some numbers in a minute. Another factor is that will uh, determine whether or not it's kind of viable for an individual farm to uh, milk on across the winter will be things like high cell count or low cell count. If cell count level is high, um, it's not likely to decline across the winter and it may well be justified to try and uh, focus on improving and re re um, improving cell count by um, drying off and working, focusing on the dry cow period to improve the, the quality of the milk being produced. Secondly, milk price is another consideration that must be borne in mind. We based our figures on the milk price of around 29 or 30 cent a litre as a base with uh, bonuses for higher fat and protein. If the price were to fall, um, uh, much much less the margin generated is obviously going to be reduced. A two cent reduction in milk price would be the equivalent of approximately nine euro per cow in, in profit across the whole herd. So quite quickly it starts to eat into the profitability levels that can be generated over the winter time. The third uh, determination of the options would be the cull cow value. So it didn't have a huge, um, it didn't add a, a huge amount to the to the profitability or the marginal profit being generated, but it did. It nonetheless it was adding some some uh, value to it, and would have an uh, impact on the overall uh, margin being generated. Fourthly, does the farm have suitable accommodation to, for a winter milking of a group of cows this this coming winter, particularly if if additional heifers have been purchased in to replace the cows that are you're planning to call next year? And finally, forage quantity and quality. Um, we saw in the earlier some of the earlier presentations that as cows are milked over the winter, the quantity of, of forage that they require will actually go up uh, compared to a cow that's, actually, that's dry. And the quality of that feed will determine the quantity of meal that needs to be fed, thus the cost and profitability that can be generated by overwinter milking. If we look then in, on, in the broader terms, where we, where we did much of our analysis was on the 100 cow herd with a very poor calving pattern. And we saw that the marginal profitability levels being generated there were in the order of 8,500 per 100 cows. Obviously, if the herd size, the calving pattern is similar, but the herd size is smaller, the margin is going to be considerably less than that. Uh, similarly, if the herd is much larger, um, you know, a larger margin can be generated from a poor calving pattern. However, if the fertility levels are pretty good on the farm, so in this case here, with 70% February, 20%, March and 10% April calving. Even with 100 cows, the, the margin, that potential margin that can be generated is considerably less than that. It's only when you're getting into numbers that you start to see a reasonable margin being generated. For a 100 cow farm, um, however, with a poor calving pattern, the margin generated by milking over the winter could be a big part of the annual income because the margin being generated across the summer may not be as, as good because of the costs incurred um, or the lack of milk being supplied across the summertime. So they're dependent on continuing to supply across the winter to generate uh, additional income for the, for the farm in question. So in conclusion, we were trying to decide, well, how, how do these conclusions apply to the decision of when to end the breeding season overall? And the first point we wanted to make here was that herds with a spread out calving pattern generally cannot afford to milk through the winter, 
cannot afford not to milk through the winter. They'll have to keep going because the margin of generation across the summer is low and any additional margin they can, they can make across the winter is, is welcome, welcome by the farming family. However, they can still make the decision to end the breeding season earlier this year, be it the 20th of June or the, sorry, be it the 20th of July or the 20th of August, and try and eliminate the, the later calving cows. But in doing so, they'll need to bring in some extra heifers next year to break the cycle of prolonged calving and overwinter milking.